everybody, this is Mary, your G Tech Guru, and I'm here once again for another edition of G Sweet Tips. Cut. Huh? No? Okay, uh, I thought today was the G Sweet Tips. No, day. it's the Global GEG Day. Oh, uh, oh, okay. So apparently today we are not doing G Sweet Tips. Today we are actually doing the Global GEG Takeover. Okay, let's do that once again. everybody, this is Mary, your G-Tech Guru, and I'm here for the Global GEG Takeover. And today, you can see that I'm in costume because I'm going to be the kitty cat vamp. And I will be showing you your superpowers in social media. And I hope you learned something today. We're going to be together for a whole hour. And for this hour, I'm going to be entertaining questions from you and your team. And also discussing some strategies that would help you to unleash those uh, powers. So let's begin. We're going live, Mary. Okay. Yay. Yay. All right. Hi, Yay. everybody. Hello, hello. We are live. Um, hello, everyone. We're here with uh, Mary Ann Mon Monzano. I'm so excited to be introducing her. For those who don't know me, I'm Stephanie Rothstein, and I am one of the six founding members of the founding team of Global Gag. Um, and we are super, super excited to be bringing you this special presentation on social power. A little bit of background about why I'm so excited. I first met uh, Mary when I went to Singapore for the Google Innovator Academy, and she was there as a rock star. She was there at the beginning, uh, or at the end, I should say, um, for the Energizer Summit, if any of you are innovators on here watching. And we were lucky enough to have an Energizer at the end. She spoke and she led a session. It was called Social Advocacy, correct, Mary? I think I had the right name for it then. And um, and I knew when I watched her session there, it was, um, it was a session that has stuck with me. I knew the information would be important. I just didn't know when I would be applying it. And now that Global Gag has started, I have needed it more and more and I keep going back to that presentation. So we are so lucky to have Mary here to um, to help to talk to. So Marianne Monzano, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself to us. I'm sorry, I should have said Marianne. Um, <laughs> introducing yourself to us. And I remember when I first met her, she said, Mary Ann. So I'm introducing Mary Ann to us today. Um, and um, if we could give her a warm, warm welcome. And then I'm going to be in the background after she says hi, helping to um, move the slides along for everybody. So right. yes, Marianne is here and she is our <laughs> for today in her lovely costume. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. And I think that note about the Mary Ann, I usually drop the Ann because most people who pronounce it, they just say Mary Ann. And I just get I, I get it. <laughs> when I hear it. So hi, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. And I'm so happy that I was invited to talk to you today to share the same advocacy camp that we had in the Innovator Academy in Singapore last year. So this, uh, I never really thought that this was going to be relevant right now. We never really thought that there was gonna be COVID happening at the moment. And more now more than ever, it's extremely important that we that we harness these powers. So that's one of the reasons why I'm wearing a costume today. And like, so you really just have, if I, if I knew that, <laughs> if I had like a whole team right now, they're all going to be in costume. So I'm uh, wearing my kitty cat vampire costume and I'm going to be um, giving you some social powers today. So by the end of our session, you're going to be superheroes. So I'm a Google certified innovator in education. And I was also the coach of the Innovation Academy in Sydney in 2017. And I really like mentoring teachers and coaching them as well. But I um, inherently, like, I'm actually a serial entrepreneur. I, I run businesses and build them and I sell them and, and other things. So, so yeah, I, I love building brands. So that's the reason why I'm here talking to you about this. <laughs> She's very modest in that introduction. She she has started many many, but um, we will we will let her remain humble in this moment, and we can talk about that later. 
Yeah. So okay. I, Mary, Mary, you just let me know where I'm going to head backstage and then I will um, share my screen um, and get mm -hmm. your presentation going. And then you let me know if you need me back on it. And all, all right. right, let's get away. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so as you can see in um in my uh of power thing you can see about your educational advocacy. So the reason why we're doing this is because uh, we have uh, a global community mapping of educational um community mapping and this community actually requires them to promote uh to promote uh the resources that we are getting, a few more institutions all over the world, and sometimes that's actually uh, kind of difficult for some people who are not really used to social media. So I'm calling it an advocacy because it's something that we really do from the bottom of our hearts, and most of, us, most of us are probably not aware of how to do it social marketing strategy. So I think my next slide is an introduction slide, Steph. So uh, we might need to skip that a bit because that's just really um, all that I've done and all that I'm doing in the Google space. But I'm also the former CEO of Blue Core and an owner of an ed tech company right now and um, other things. Like, uh, like what Stephanie said. All right, let's dig in. Uh, why are we here? What are we learning today? So firstly, we are going to understand why we need a social marketing strategy for education. The next one is um, how do we get started on uh, our social media strategy? How do we actually do it? How do we lay the foundation for a good social media strategy? The next one is uh, the meat of it, which is building the content and influence that we need in order to uh, actually get started. Usually this is all about building your first week of uh, content planning and then the weeks after that. And then later on, I'm just gonna take a look at the live comments as well as the questions that we haven't answered yet and, uh, and answer them along with the team, hopefully. Okay, so, uh, so here, why we need a social media strategy. The first thing is, of everybody who's on Twitter, and I know that a lot of you probably heard this on Twitter or on Facebook, you know that you are building your own professional or personal learning network. So next slide. And in this uh, personal learning network, what are the reasons why uh, you need it? First thing is you need it for um, exchanging ideas with other uh, teachers. There are certain things that you may not know that you will find in, in social media. You'll be able to find your tribe if you're a new teacher. If you're a, a more tenured teacher, you'll also be able to find people who can help you out. Next is in the time, for example, of a crisis like this, there are so many resources floating around. And the nice thing about social media is it can actually bring those uh, resources together. And I really like um, that you have so many of these expert educators that would definitely help you out in bringing those resources together and only the resources that you need so that you get you don't get uh, lost in this whole uh, sea of resources. The last one is, you know, you collaborate and you build a global network. Like I'm, I'm actually broadcasting from the Philippines right now. It's sunrise here. That's why it's a little dim. It's just about sunrise. It's around six in the morning. And so uh, if you're watching me and I look like uh, I'm still puffy, that means I just woke up. So the nice thing about this is that we actually build a global network in social media and a lot of the friends and the mentors and the people that I've coached as well come from so many different parts of the world. And you can do that too if you harness your social media powers. Okay, next. So the nice thing also about this is that there are things that you really have to remember when you're creating your social media strategy. Uh, and so many people get into this trap, like especially when you're a teacher. When you're a teacher, you sometimes are serious in social media. And I think the first rule that you need to remember is to not take yourself too seriously. Like just don't be too serious in social media. You're there to be social, so be social. Right, So it's about being social, connecting with people. So don't take yourself too seriously. That's the first one. The next one is be open to paid promotions. 
why am I saying this? Um, it might be that yes, we are in a in an educator community or in a community where we are voluntarily uh, giving our services, but we might need to be open to some paid promotions in the future, especially when we have an event or a campaign and we need to reach more people than our current um, than our current pool of people that we know. So be open to possibly paying for promotions, but only for specific campaigns. So that's something that you need to be open for. Don't think, okay, I can do everything for free because inbound um, traffic may not be enough for you at some point. The third one, and for me, actually, this is also really, really important. And the core of your campaign is have amazing content, have great content. Don't be, um, don't scrimp on your content. Don't think, okay, this is a secret. I want to, I want to keep this uh, secret for now. No, share, share, especially if you're uh, sharing stuff around Google technologies. Google keeps improving on their um, applications. And so if you share everything that you know, um, tomorrow there's another one that's gonna come up. So just share everything because um, when you have great content, this content gets shared by other people and it really promotes peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Next is you have to craft a strong call to action. If you have a social media plan, you have these nice posts, a great video, a great blog post, but you don't have a call to action, it's kind of missing something. It's missing an ingredient there. So you have to make sure that there is a really good call to action with your uh, with your content. Just put a very good call to action there. It has to be just one. Don't put like too many call to actions in your uh, in your posts because like people are going to be confused. What am I supposed to do? What am I expected to do? Am I expected to sign up for an event? Am I expected to follow? a page or follow um, a Twitter profile? Am I expected to join Twitter chat and all of those things? Just fix one call to action and uh, put that in there. The fifth rule is, the fifth rule, always provide added value. Just make sure that at the end of the day, you know, if you're not really providing value, then you're not really doing um, your job and your social media followers justice. They're there to watch you and they're there to really follow what you're going to share. So if you're not um, adding that value, pretty soon you're going to lose those followers and you're going to lose the people that are really watching out for your content. So just make sure that you're always adding value with whatever you do. So the sixth one here is broadcast, but also engage. What does that mean? So when you broadcast, it means that all right, so I'm broadcasting something. I'm saying, hey, there's this nice uh, social powers uh, thing happening right now, but also engage with them. That means do a poll, ask them questions, maybe ask them like possible or future questions that you may want to discuss. I'll give you an example. In this um, webinar that we have right now, Originally, I have a different presentation for it, which is exactly the same presentation I presented last year in Singapore. But I'm, um, I asked uh, Stephanie for questions and a lot of you guys have submitted your questions and they were really great at guiding me into changing some parts of this presentation and addressing those questions one by one. And that's really great because the engagement is just going to make everything so much better. So just think of it as butter. Like everything you cook with butter is good. That's just me. Okay. Next is encourage peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Nothing is so good as peer-to-peer -peer sharing. And I think that with the global GEG group, all of you are already quite aware and cognizant of how uh, important um, GEG, um, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer sharing in GEG is. It's so good that sometimes you start a community that's small and because of peer-to-peer -peer sharing, it just balloons into this thing, just booms into this global thing. And, and that's what we're striving at. We want to be viral, right? So we, we want to be the next YouTube star. <laughs> Imagine if you're the next YouTube star in education. That's not a bad goal to have, right? So let's get started and try to lay down the foundation for creating our social marketing plan. Okay, so 
let's move ahead next slide and how to develop that social marketing plan i don't really want to put too many rules in this so what i've put instead are three questions that you need to ask okay and the first question is i think the most important question it's not why it's who who are you targeting what are you doing basically for your posts who are you posting for you're, you're going to need to ask yourself, who are you posting for? And the innovators that are watching this right now, you know this so well. You need to create your user profile. You need to understand who your user is. So are you creating this post for students? Are you creating this post for teachers? Are you creating this post for school administrators? So you need to know. Um, I put an example in here. And uh, the example is that Carla is a middle school teacher who's also a mom struggling with teaching at home and taking care of the kids at the same time. So take a look at the, the user profile. What are the problems and the pain points of that user? And how are you going to alleviate those pain points? You need to think about that and kind of write it down. I usually write down my, my user profiles and my user personas. I like writing them down and putting names to them so that they become real to you. So let's say Michael is this um, higher ed teacher or university teacher who lives alone, um, who likes to watch Netflix, right? And he doesn't have a lot of time uh, doing more research. And how are you going to serve these resources to him? So it's really important that we ask ourselves, who are we targeting, right? So uh, <laughs> next we have... Um, the next question that we have is how can we deploy our strategy for success? So deployment is also important in the social marketing plan. Why are we asking this? We're asking this because we need to know our platform. You see, we have to be selective. There are so many platforms out there like TikTok, for example, is gaining in popularity. Um, and are you going to be joining the TikTok, uh, uh, the TikTok system, right? Are we going to be creating TikToks now? That's really kind of a question you need to ask. Again, go back to your user profile and then choose what is gonna be the platform for it. There are so many social media platforms. You have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have Instagram, and you have Pinterest as well. And you still have your Google communities. And there are so many platforms, but you cannot use all of them. Not all of them are gonna be perfect for you. So you will need to choose and focus on only the social media platforms that are really going to help you and focus the messaging on there. The third one is what are your goals and objectives? Why are you doing this? What are you really up for? What are you really um, aiming for? And of course, you need to make uh, SMART goals, right? So if you're not aware of what a SMART goal is, a SMART goal stands for a specific measurable, attainable, uh, realistic, and time-bound uh, goal or objective. You need to make sure that you had that, um, you have that goal in place before you even begin this. And I think that's where I go with my um, watch points. So let's go to the next uh, slide and take a look at the watch points. Why am I putting watch points here? A lot of people who foray into the social marketing plan, just they go into it without any uh, preparation and they don't think about the questions they need to ask they don't think about the user profile they just think okay i'll create a facebook page that's it right so when you uh when you create a facebook page all right build it and they will come all right it's not gonna happen so you build it they will not not all of them will come. Some of them will, but you know, not all of them will. You have a watch point here. The first thing is don't do it unless, unless you're ready. Please make sure that you're ready first. Just make sure that you are uh, ready emotionally, your team is ready, you know, to handle all of this because there's gonna be a lot of people that will uh, comment. Maybe some of them will be negative. Are you ready for it? So you may have to make sure that you're ready for it. Next is don't be a brag. You know, I have this really great, um, I don't know if you use Flocabulary, but Flocabulary has this really beautiful, um, uh, I think it's a it's a rhyme, so it's a, it's a rap. And it says like, don't be a brag, delete it. So 
if it's a brag, just delete it. Don't do this whole social media thing because you want to brag about um, or you want to promote yourself. Like I am this really great innovator, you know, listen to me. No, <laughs> don't do it for that. Always remember your objective and who you're doing this for. And that's why I said, go back to your user profile. If you are um, doing this just for yourself, then, you know, you just have to check your ego a bit there and just not be a brag, okay? The next one is don't be afraid to try it. Like some people will say, but I'm not really a Facebook user. I don't know how to use Twitter. You know, don't knock it till you try it. Don't be afraid. Just try it. You know, it's not going to eat you. So just log in. There's so many friendly people there. And people are just going to help you if you ask for it. And that's kind of what I learned all throughout my career as an entrepreneur is that when you need help, you ask for it. And when you ask for it, somebody will help you. So just uh, don't be afraid to try it. Next is don't use it only to advertise. So we are not doing this only to advertise. Make sure, again, that you add value. This all ties together. Um, that's the reason why I put these little lists in here so that you remember that they all tie together, right? Add value. Don't use it only to advertise your brand or don't use it to only advertise your advocacy because helping others would also help you. When you help others, then, you know, it's going to be really great. Uh, next is don't assume... Um, that all sites are good for you. And I think I addressed that in the previous slides. Be selective, okay? Just choose, pick and choose. We don't have unlimited time in this world, so <laughs> you need to make sure that your time is, time is of the essence. I don't know about you, but this whole COVID thing has made my days be busier. I think it's because people suddenly discovered that Hangouts work. <laughs> Next is don't just create pages and think you're done. Like, okay, um, I've already created this page. I'm done. This beautiful, beautiful blog and page and Twitter, Twitter feed. I have this nice banner and beautiful profile picture. Okay, don't just do that. Make sure that when you create, you continue creating. And why do you do that? Because you would like to promote and get Google to also see your stuff. And if you don't keep updating, people will not come. So they will keep coming to your page. They will keep coming to your site if and only if you deliver good content and you deliver consistent content. Once again, consistency is the key to success here. Okay, so let's go to the next one. I think this is really important because I saw some questions around this, like how, how do you do your roles? How do you make sure that you build a good team? So these are the staffing considerations. So if you're a member of a GEG right now, or if you're a teacher or a member of a school who wants to build something, a social marketing strategy for your school, then make sure that you choose your team wisely, okay? So choose them wisely first. Do you have a budget for, for them? You know, every time you have a meeting, you have to feed them. I'm Filipino. Every meeting has to have food. So if you don't have food and you don't have budget for food, it's going to be a sad meeting, right? So have a budget for, for things. Have a budget for possible ads. You never know. Maybe you're going to run ads for, for events. So have a budget for that, right? So there's that, that one. Next is the time commitments. Not everybody are on the same schedule. Some people are okay on weekends. Some people work at night. And some people only sleep three hours a day, like me. So <laughs> some people have more hours than others. Understand their time commitments. Are they busy? Or are they not? Are they free um, to actually do this and help you out? And uh, if they commit, you have to hold them to that. They have to be accountable to the time commitment they will give you. So the third one is the number of platforms. See, I keep going back to this because it's so important. How many platforms are we putting our marketing plan on? Are we just doing it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram? Just to let you know, I have this really great Instagram teacher that I'm following. I'm just going to uh, do a shout out here. I don't know if she's here or watching. His, her name's Natalie Priester. And I love her. I love her Instagram feed. I love her Instagram stories and her um, 
her stories about balancing her uh, home life and having two small kids with her teacher life. And she's able to do it fantastically. So those things are, she chose her platform and her platform is Instagram. She only chose one platform, that's it. And she did it really well. So it doesn't matter how many platforms you choose. You just have to make sure what the platforms you choose are gonna work for you and you're really going to be able to devote time to it. And also on your staff, that your staff knows how to use that platform. What's the use of um, doing it on Instagram? If nobody knows how to use Instagram. You need to make sure that at least one person on your team knows how to use it. So next one is your content strategy. Content strategy has to be planned. Like how do you plan your content strategy? I actually didn't put it on here, but um, I have this rule on the content strategy plan and I call it the, um, the content mix pyramid. I'm actually going to just send it to Stephanie so that we can put it on the description box below after this, um, this stream is over. So the content mix pyramid talks about the frequency of your uh, content and the type of content you're going to put. This is actually more about, are you going to entertain? Are you going to inspire? Are you going to like start a conversation with them? Is this just gonna be an info thing? So all of those things, there's a frequency to it and an amount of content that you can create. I will be sending you that content mix pyramid at the end of this. Um, next is the current and future community size. I know that GEG started really small. I remember uh, here in the Philippines, uh, we were the pioneering ones that uh, created the chapters of the GEGs here. And then eventually uh, the GEG chapters just ran on their own and became um, bigger and bigger. You know, it just becomes bigger than you. So when you do your content strategy and your social media strategy, make sure that you understand what is your size, the current size of your community, and what are you aiming for? Like today, you may be 30 people. Tomorrow, you may be a 1,000. So you need to prepare for that future eventuality because, again, it's a goal that we have put in our SMART goals. Our goal is to have, say, 10,000 um, followers by the end of the month, right? So if that, that's our goal, then we have to prepare for that because that's a size goal. You need to make sure your content will actually scale. All right, so next slide. The next slide, uh, the next slide is really good for me because this uh, takes a look at what does a day in the life of a marketer looks like. Uh, I know that we are teachers as well as marketers. We have jobs. And so this whole social media thing is just going to be a part-time thing for us. But what does a day in the life of you as a marketer or you as a social media strategist would look like? The first one is you're going to be posting. You're going to be posting per channel, per frequency. So let's say in Facebook, I have to post twice a day. In Twitter, I have to tweet at least three times a day. That's one of the things you're going to be doing. The regular posting or two times a week. It depends on your frequency. Next is you have to monitor. You know, when you just post, again, like I said, engage. People are going to be commenting. And you have to make sure that somebody is responding to comments. So if I'm assigned to do the social marketing today, I have to make sure that I post. And then I also have to make sure that I'm checking the channels and responding to comments throughout the day. The next one is I have to promote and engage. So let's say, for example, somebody asked me a question and I can answer the question with a resource that my community has created. Wow, that's my time to shine. So just go ahead and promote your resource, right? Engage them with um, by inviting them over to your website and maybe downloading some resources that your community has created. The next one is influencer outreach. There are rock stars in the community. There are so many rock stars, especially on Twitter. So many rock stars that you can follow. Follow those rock stars. And that's one of the things that you're going to be doing in your day in the life you will be following these rock stars and also commenting on their posts. Why are you doing that? So that you can be a rock star too one day. You know, those rock stars didn't become rock stars in a day. They became rock stars over time because that's what they did. So they engaged with these other rock stars in the community 
And, you know, we all ourselves up. We lift ourselves up, helping other teachers. This is a teacher helps teacher community. Uh, the final one is uh, blog. So if you're a writer, blog about this. Like, just if it's one of the things that you are required to do or maybe one of the things that you actually like to do, then write about about um, write about these resources, write about helping teachers. Again, add value. And blogging is one of those um, really great platforms that you can do because when you blog, then you can promote that same blog over and over throughout uh, the time that you are um, promoting as a social marketer. All right, so the next one is, of course, this is really about building heroes. That's why I have a cape. I know that this is like a vampire cape. It's a really long cape, actually. It's a very big vampire cape. Build a hero. So you hero here. You might not know social media, except this is what I ate this morning, you know, what my son that looks like from my house. But when you're a part of a social media market, you're going to be a hero before long, right? And how do you create a hero team? You create a hero team by first creating a great social media policy. So what are, what are our schedules? Uh, you have to make sure that the schedules are followed. You have to be a little strict about the brand and the voice. So let's say we are not allowed to like, do profanity. Of course, that's a given, but... Uh, you have to put those very strict branding rules in there, the guidelines, and everybody has to follow it. You have to create a really strict social media policy. Allow for some um, adjustments, but the foundation has to be very, very um, strong. Otherwise, people are just going to deviate, and that will dilute your messaging. We don't want that. So the next uh, one is show them the WIFM. I don't know. Do you know what a WIFM means? I, who knows what a WIFM means? WIFMs are like, what's in it for me? So if I am, <laughs> if I'm going to be part of the hero team, what's in it for me, right? So you have to make sure that you build that value for your team as well, right? So build the value for your team. Why am I even joining this? Why am I going to be part of this social mar marketing hero team? You need to have um, the benefit as well. Think about the benefit for the people who are going to be helping you out, all right? And the next one is training. Training, training, training. Don't stop training. There's so many new trends that are happening in the social marketing world, and not just in the social marketing world, but in, in our industry. And so we need to, to make sure that we don't stop training our team or else they will stop being heroes and become just ordinary citizens again, okay? So that's how you build your social media hero team. And um, I think we, we're getting into the content and influence. Are you still alive? Can I just see uh, in the live comments? I just wanna know if people are still alive. <laughs> Yay, okay. All right, so they're still good. I like some of the names in, in the live comments. <laughs> All right, building content. Right, so now we're going to be building content and influence. How do we do it? We don't want to be the influence C. We don't want to be under the influence. We want to be, we want to be the influencer, right? So next, the thing you need to do is to narrow down what you want to post about. I know that I keep saying this, be selective. So always be selective, not just in your social media platforms, but also in your messaging. Uh, for example, I create a page and I just post about everything that's happening in in the industry that is not um a very focused messaging so think about a focused messaging so that when you build your community people will go to that community every time they need something about the topic that you're focused on so let's say for example you can see it the the branding you can see it in the most successful teacherpreneurs and the teacher trainers and the and the teacher rock stars that we have on social media they did not dilute their messaging most of them they just stuck to this one platform and they preached about it and they expounded on it and every time you need help on that particular thing you know where to go 
And that's why you need to narrow down what you want to post about. All right, so think about this requires a little bit more thinking. You know how it is that simple solutions to complex problems are always the hardest to think about. <laughs> Do you agree? All right, so the next one is bring something new to the table. What is this something new? Everybody's posting about teaching from home. Everybody's posting about what is that newfangled thing that creates a background in Google Meet? Because everybody suddenly wants a background. It's like my white wall is not enough anymore. <laughs> I have to have a Snapchat filter. I have to have this crown on my head when I'm doing my, um, when my, with my meetings. Why? What's? Why do you have to do that, right? So because people are always trying to bring something new, and when they bring something new, just people just jump into the bandwagon. So think about your messaging and think about what new thing can you bring to the table that people can actually get into right one example is yesterday i uh i had an experiment with um, a co-teacher and, and a co-trainer and this experiment was about what if you're in a google meet with somebody or in your in a hangout or even a in a teams and during that video conference one person is presenting but in the middle of the presentation you need to give the the floor to another teacher. What happens then? So what happens is you, you stop presenting and the person then presents the exact same presentation, but she starts in the middle. So yesterday we experimented on this remote for slides where we don't have to change it. And it actually works. And it was something new. And I'm definitely going to uh, blog about it. I'm definitely going to be writing about it. Okay, so bring something new to the table. Think about what new thing you're going to bring. The next thing, next slide, is again, choose your channel. See, I think by this time, you already know how serious I am about choosing your channel. Choose wisely, you have limited time. We don't have so much time. There's so many platforms. If you're going to choose YouTube, choose YouTube and be very good at it. So choose your channel and be really good at it. Uh, don't dilute. All right, next, develop your content strategies. So creating your content strategy plan. I think I'm just going to jump into this later because I have um, a link for you guys that would give you a sample content plan or a sample content calendar. And this content calendar already creates a kind of a mix of the different styles of content that you can create. So I'm gonna jump back to content strategy later on, okay? So let's get on to the next slide first. And the next slide is distribution. Distribution is important because you don't know when you're going to post. So historically, Facebook and Twitter, nine in the morning is a good time. And Instagram, 5 p.m. is a good time. So, but all of these things are actually dependent on the people who actually watch you. For example, in my case, uh, the most popular Facebook video I have is being watched at 9 p.m. and 3 in the morning because that video is about working from home. And here in the Philippines, the people who work from home are actually outsourced employees. And so they work from home, outsourced from the U.S., they work U.S. time. So 9 p.m. and 3 in the morning, basically 9 a.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. Eastern time are there times to actually watch videos on Facebook. And so I had to adjust my um, media strategy to adjust to those times. You really have to take a look as well, uh, uh, take a look at your reports. Take a look at when your people are watching, when your followers are watching, and then adjust according to uh, their watch time. So distribute your content accordingly and then adjust their watch times, okay? Uh, the next one is um, we have grow and engage, uh, have polls, have contests, have a giveaway. If you have a sponsor, you know, and you're giving away a book, people are going to jump into that. So have guestings. For example, today is our global GEG takeover, like things like that. Have somebody else take over your uh, social media for a day so and see what happens. Grow and engage with your followers and you will see the followers grow as well. Because when you engage with them, they tell other people. 
And those other people will tell other people. And the people you don't know are always more than the people that you know. That is the rule with social media. The people you don't know are always more. Okay, so next one, evaluate. I love reports. Like anybody who knows me knows that I am mad for analytics. I love analytics. So if you don't have a Google Analytics account yet, sign up. You do have some free things there that you can do. So I know that it's up to 50 URLs for free. There is also a skills academy somewhere there where you can be um, trained on how to use Google Analytics, the fundamentals at least. Analytics is actually going to help you evaluate your progress, how you understand demographics. You, we will understand reach. Where are your followers coming from? Are they coming from the East Coast, the West Coast? Maybe they're coming from the other side of the world. So take a look at those things and then evaluate. Um, evaluate your progress, study your data, and then adjust accordingly. So the next one, and I think I'm going to come back to that, be consistent. Consistency is the key to success here. Be consistent. If you say you're going to do it, do it every week, every month. If you're not consistent, you're going to lose followers. So you have to be very consistent about the frequency of your posts because people are going to expect good things from you. And if when you don't deliver, too bad, they're going to move to a different place. Attention spans are so small nowadays. So uh, to just wrap it up, you just create, share, analyze, and repeat. So let's uh, move to the next slide. So basically, you create your content. You make sure that you promote peer-to-peer -peer sharing. And then um, analyze, uh, the, analyze all of those reports that you get, adjust accordingly, repeat, right? And then create content again. Uh, so that's basically your cycle. Create, share, analyze, repeat. So make sure that you always go through this because you're going to get um, stagnant if you don't do this. Uh, always change your content based on the results of your analysis because data doesn't lie. Numbers don't lie. So here's the good stuff. A freebie for you. So when you go to bit.ly slash social powers, you basically get your first week plan. So your first week plan is uh, basically how you're going to create uh, a plan in here. You have to put a hashtag as well. Do not underestimate the power of the hashtag, okay? The hashtag is important so that you can be found, you can be seen, all right? Of course, you have uh, so many different tools that you can use. Like some people use Hootsuite. Some people use, um, I, I think for Instagram, I know that some of uh, the people I know are using so many different tools. But nothing beats for me the good old spreadsheet. Uh, it's free. You don't have to pay for, for it. And it's also flexible. So this is uh, just done on Google Spreadsheets. It would give you your hashtags as well. You can change the hashtags at any time. And again, keep in mind the content mix pyramid that I'm going to be sharing afterwards because the content mix pyramid would give you a good mix of when do you entertain, when do you inspire, when do you teach, and when do you provide relevant information. So those things you have to think about when you start creating your, your plan. All right, so that's my freebie for the day. And um, that's it. I think I have 15 minutes, Stephanie, for our questions. Is that right? I yeah. timed it to 45 yeah. minutes. I think yeah. I was right was on the money at 45 minutes. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. So that was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we did have a lot of questions coming in the chat. So um, no. as I, yeah, Sorry. no, no, I think that means that you were doing great. A lot of what you were bringing up, I think, was hitting home. Um, people were wondering, so Steph Howell's question came up a, a few times about do time zones matter when you're talking about um, posting at a particular time and doing your analytics? Yes, time zones do matter. Uh, understand that the time zones that are going to appear in your analytics would be your time zone or the time zone that you put in your account. So uh, it will show that, like I said, my time zones were like 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. And I had to really think hard 
why are people watching my videos at three in the morning in the Philippines? And you can see in the demographics, there's a map there, especially in Google Analytics, where your followers and where your viewers are coming from. So you'll be able to see, okay, a lot of my followers are coming from this demographic. So maybe I should adjust as well to their time zone. So if they're watching it at 9 p.m., 9 in the morning Eastern, right, then I have to post at 9 in the morning Eastern. It doesn't really matter if you think about it. You will see the spikes. That's when you're supposed to post. When you see the spikes in your analytics, that's your posting time. Either right before that um, and then just adjust accordingly. Because sometimes people do that. It's really a trial and error at the end of the day. So would you recommend when we're thinking about we have we have a team right? <laughs> we're talking about i know chris um so if we're thinking about um this this idea that chris is bringing up do you do you think that it would make sense to then repost um considering that we're we're geg global to have people reposting the same thing at different times depending on where they are in the world and that we have that as something that we strategically do that is a really good question chris but the thing is when you repost, it floods your feed mm. and, again, diluting the feed. So it's always nice to just post something that is, one, something that is unique and then have your peers share it. And the more people share it, it will eventually reach their time zone. And so if you can encourage your followers to actually follow a specific hashtag, it doesn't matter what time zone they are in. When they type this hashtag, they'll be able to see your post anyway. And the more popular the posts are, the you know the algorithm picks it up. So the, the trick here really is to make sure that you take advantage of your peer-to-peer -peer sharing. But if you feel that at the beginning of your campaign, you need a little bit of a boost, then yes, repeat it if you think it's going to help. Okay, and then Stuart's question here, what if you're not a natural creator? There are some people out there that produce amazing stuff compared to little old me. Oh, Stuart, I'm sure you're Stuart. awesome, Stuart. I like Whoa. your you know. Okay, so you what, yeah, what do you suggest if people are worried about um, their content? I know that um, one of the things I was thinking, at least with that, goes along with the PLN idea about that you're not alone, right? So so how, what, what would be some good strategies um, if people, maybe if there's something that they feel like their community needs, but it's not a strong area of content for themselves? Like, uh, like social media marketing, for example. So I'm like, I'm living in another part of the world and I was brought into uh, the global GEG by Stephanie because she said, okay, I need this. And I know who the person is that I can talk to that can talk about this. And that's the nice thing about having a really good PLN. If you have a nice, good network, you will find experts in almost everything there. And if you don't know, you can always ask like okay i need somebody to introduce me to this person who's an expert at this i've met so many of my rock stars that way i'm a fangirl through and through so i like i fangirl the people i like i hound them i stalk them sorry but <laughs> that's how i do it <laughs> it's necessary sometimes you know within limits within limits but maybe yeah. not yeah <laughs> but it's necessary um and chris uh chris betcher had mentioned twit Twit timer, um, and there was questions around if you've used that before, is it completely free? Um, and then there were a few other ones that people were talking about using also TweetDeck as well. Um, no, tools. I never got around to tools because of my 45 minute time limit. So I was thinking there are so many tools around, uh, around there. Actually, I was talking to Stephanie about this earlier that I would like to do a video around just tools on uh, the social media marketing tools you can use and my honest feedback and honest review. I'm uh, I'm gonna rip it apart if it's really not good or if it's way too expensive because I've tried a lot of them. Some of them really didn't work for me and some of them work. Even the ones that are paid, there are some paid ones that it's really okay to pay for it because of what you get. But there are some that are just you know, you pay for it, you're still going to get um, not a very good product. So, yeah. But maybe that will be a part two, hopefully. Yeah, that's going to be a part two. I hope you're still here for part two. 
<laughs> All right, you heard her say it here, everybody. It wasn't just me. I love that this is recorded. Um, okay, I'm looking to see if there were other, um, if there were some other questions. I know one of the things that kept coming up with your with your great um, spreadsheet, your free sheet, um, and your resource that you had shared, um, and one of the things I kept thinking about for that really is. How do you best hone in on developing those hashtags for each of those days of the week? Like, is that something that you would do if you have a team? Uh, is that something that yeah. we do together? Do you trust one person to come up with them? How often do they change or don't they? No, um, typically I know that I've put like so many hashtags there. It's, those are just examples, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing um, content marketing spread out across so many different platforms. Because some platforms accept hashtags really well and some platforms don't really use them that much. For example, if you're doing it on Instagram or on Twitter, Instagram and Twitter really picks up on hashtags very well. If you're doing content marketing on Facebook, you have to do it both on graphics, video. Video really, really works because it gets picked up in a different tab called watch. So. Uh, the content would have to depend on that and the hashtag too would you have to choose one hashtag for your for your group and you have to just run with that hashtag every time so all of your posts should have that one hashtag and you just add maybe one or two hashtags that are related to either your reference let's say if you're referencing google in education then reference google education or reference your community for innovators hashtag google ei then reference them. Why? Because they're rock stars. So if you reference them, they're going to see your post and they will share it and retweet it. And that's going to be peer to peer sharing points for you. So that's Absolutely. one of the reasons why you would use it. I, I um, appreciate that. Yeah. So Robin's question here, how much time is reasonable? I think for a full time job, a lot of us here, knowing that we're here voluntarily in this group, What's a reasonable mm -hmm. amount of time to be spending on social media um, to help promote the brand of whatever it is or the group that you're trying to help promote, whether that be your GEG or global GEG or some other group? Just make sure that you have, uh, you already have a really nice big team. Uh, when you have a good big team, you don't really have a lot of problems because you can put even just one hour or even 30 minutes a day. Can you just, um, watch over our Twitter feed for 30 minutes. And that's really important that somebody's watching your Twitter feed and making sure that um, somebody's replying, especially when it's urgent. Some people don't really have time for social media. So the time that they're on is the time you have to be there. And that's why uh, social media gets outsourced everywhere. And that's why people get paid to do this because the time you have to reach the audience where they are basically. So how much time? Make sure that on your content plan, if your content plan is really well laid out and planned out, this can all be scheduled beforehand. And when you schedule it, you can just forget about it. It will post on its own. And all you need to do is to devote a certain percentage of time to watch for comments once it posts. That seems so, super important. So sch scheduling the posts, but then having specific people in real time in all different time zones. So yeah. we could have something going where people maybe take 30 minutes or an hour of time and we yeah. spread it out amongst our group that they would be on this yeah. channel for that portion of time replying. Um, yeah. Do you, um, do you do things with your team where you have like specific rules around how they respond? I know you mentioned that earlier, some guidelines. So yeah. that, no matter who it is, that it'll feel like it's coming from your brand? Yes. So you have to have rules with your branding. So that's why I said, understand what your social media policy is. Mm. Create a really good social media policy and a voice. So if you're a helpful voice, if you're a funny voice, oh, maybe take a look at Wendy's. Why is Wendy's, the Twitter in Wendy's always sarcastic? Because they built it that way. Mm. You know, they built their social me media policy that way. Anybody... I don't believe there's only one person who's answering <laughs> the people who tweet to Wendy's, right? <laughs> but <laughs> the answers are almost always, uh, you know, sarcastic and witty and stuff. And that's the reason for that is they've built a social media policy around that voice. And if you're doing learning or teaching, maybe you might want to um, put that voice in there. 
there are people who use bitmojis, for example. Like once in a while, put a bitmoji there so they know it's us. <laughs> it so something around really understanding your tone and even the so way that the tone comes across, whether that be in, in written form or even in the use of pictures or in GIFs, right? Like what is yeah. it that becomes the way that we post for our group? I think that's really yeah. important. Um, yeah, been, really let me see if there are any other ones, team, if you see any other questions that came up earlier that we didn't get to. Yes. People, let's see, I'm scrolling back because I think people, I like were, yeah, scrolling back. Oh, there, um, there was a lot about not diluting the message and making sure that that message, yeah. is wrong. I'm trying to see if there's a question around that. Oh, there is a question here from somebody on, um, let me see. I'm trying to, okay, <laughs> just scrolling back through them. Hold on one second. Um, but if anybody else sees other questions coming through, I'm looking. Let's see at our new comments. We have a couple. Pe people are, um, let's see. We had some, I think, let me look back because we had a few. You got to a lot of the pre-questions that people, people were asking. Um, but yeah. some people were wondering, I think it goes, um, one of the things that is listed in your in your social media topic is there's like um, which I think Chris's question was around the the the, re, the reposting. Oh, you let go of the cape. It's okay. I um, let go of the cape. It's so hot. It's okay. You're a real <laughs> person. Um, you're going Clark Kentish right now. So um, so when we um, but is there a time at which you want to refocus people or help alert people to what the original question was or the original content? Like, should you return to it a week or two later? I remember there was something when you first presented that you had a kind of a, a repeat of dates or you mentioned about at some point, then you come back and you repost that same content. Do you have recommendations yeah. around that? Well, if, it's, if the content is uh, really relevant, you would see that content come up like all the time. For example, that's I think how your growth mindset posts come up. Sometimes you would see it, it goes viral all over and then it's silent again and then it goes viral again because somebody shared it. Uh, the reason for that is we've got so many new teachers and so many new teachers on, on these platforms and it's the first time they're discovering these things. And the first time they discover something old, it's something new to them. And so they retweet it and repost it. It's an aha moment. And when it's an aha moment for one person, it can be an aha moment for another. It just becomes viral. So make sure that if your content is relevant, maybe star it. Star it for future posting. If you know, if you know that it's not time bound and it's not the kind of content that will just age, then yeah, make sure to start it and post it maybe once every two months or three months. Okay. When I when I keep thinking Don't about hurt. keeping our website active, like you were you were talking about if you're creating a site or you're creating a platform, then you're wanting to make sure that that content continues to be added to. But we might have some things from last month that's still relevant as people are coming in. So um so I just yes. keep thinking about um, knowing that some of these things we're offering things in a series of content as we keep going, but it might help somebody to go back and rewatch. So um, I, I think what I'm learning from you is that we just need to be strategic with how and when we end up reposting. And then maybe you brand it as we're coming back to this series that got so much uh, that got so much praise when we first launched it back in May, and we're going to rebroadcast that yeah. again that didn't see it. I don't know that there needs to be some way that you reintroduce content in a way that still feels new and relevant, but that new people yeah. can do that, right? I mean, even- One of the, one of the ideas, one of, I have an idea around that. I think I just thought about it like last week. Uh, I call it ship it or rip it. Like, <laughs> you know how you see a lot of app smashing happening <laughs> all over the, the internet, you app smash, this uh, app with another app. Like I want to use Flipgrid with this app. Like I want to use, for example, Pear Deck and Google Slides are like married. So take a look at these app smashing uh, things that people are suggesting all over the web and do a, 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 rip, a, a ship it or rip it debate. Like get people to judge and then get people to just ship it. Are you for this shipping 
Are you for this app smashing or are you ripping it? So, it apart. and then you just kind of turn it around. I'll, I'll give you the rules for it. It's a it's a pretty good um, it's a pretty good game to do on something like this, and it's really quite engaging. And the nice thing about it is you can have guest people to do it, especially those who can really rip things apart. That's the kind of people you would want in something like that. Like you. <laughs> like you. <laughs> no. I know others. I can think of. I I can think of like Betcher is there. He says. Twitter is mostly whatever bizarre thing in my head or <laughs> interesting thing that I thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would be you. Yes, yes. We we had some we had some fierce competitions happening within our own Twitter feed um, and our own group and in all different areas of social media. It went on to Facebook. Um, so I think when we started to talk about and even looking at previewing the content that you had before, um, some in our team, I would say, really, really align with that that competition and getting the conversation started. Um, and but yeah. it's interesting to me because uh, when that was first happening, I didn't even know it was a strategy. I'm sitting there going like, why are these people like arguing about one thing versus another? Can't we all just use both? And I'm that mediator. And then I'm realizing, but people are actually talking about the content when you do that. Um, and it gets yeah. people excited to talk about it. So it is really interesting um, yeah. strategies around that. Um, I know that we are now at four o'clock. Um, so I just wanted to say yes. thank you, thank you, thank you for your time today. I know thank that uh, sometimes internet and bandwidth and all of that um, in your region is not your friend with the weather. Um, and I <laughs> know to you um, for being so gracious with your time and waking up super early for us. Um, everybody just kept commenting <laughs> around that you, have, that you have taught them so much. And I think that you've helped us to know and hone in on the questions that we still have. Um, and I'm hopeful that maybe we can do some future sessions that will help people dive deeper into actually creating some of it, practicing what a social media post might look like and maybe even ripping it apart and really looking at, is that valuable or is every word in it the tone that we want and figuring that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So thank you so much, Mary. Um, and You're welcome. And thank, thank you again for everybody who watched today. Yay. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm posting a better video of this same presentation on my on my site too. So I'll send that to Stephanie later on. Yay, okay. we we'll definitely have that. Yay. You had mentioned um, the the content content mix pyra pyramid. So we will yeah. post all of that after. Um, we'll make sure to follow up. And then as we have future sessions, we will be sure to invite everybody here and outside if you're watching this later um, so that we can go at even a deeper level to what it means to be doing social media branding. And Thank continue. you. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much. Nice. Uh, Bye. Oh, and we do have um, Abbott or Steph. I didn't know if people, if we want to post our, um, our feedback for the session before we close out. Steph, are you on it? I'm assuming you are or someone. Otherwise, I will go find it. There we go. I knew my team was on it. They're awesome. Um, so if, you, if you're on right now, if you're still on our live or if you're watching this after, if you wouldn't mind going and giving us feedback on this session, we would absolutely love it. It helps us to know how to create future content for everyone. And we just want to say thank you once again to Marianne Monzano. We are so lucky that she was here today. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye.